Project number one is a yard flag wall hanger. We're going to use some of these um, pit berries from Dollar Tree. Use any ribbons you like. These came from the thrift store in some type of a kit, I think. And they're just little scraps of ribbon. These are two pieces that I got off of another project. It's just going to be the tops and bottoms. And then I thrifted this beautiful cardinal rustic looking yard flag. We're going to use some foam board. You can get yours at the Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted. And we're going to put it on top of something. You can either use your cutting mat or you can just measure it with a ruler, whichever way you want. And figure out what size you have because we want that foam board to be the backing for this project to make it sturdy. So measure that out and that's what I'm doing here, just showing you that I'm measuring it out. And I'm going to be cutting it on top of my mat. I'm just using my rotary cutter but you can use whatever you have to do this. I just find this is easier and it makes a cleaner line than using scissors. Sometimes you have to flip it over on the other side and then cut the other side as well. Because the paper, there's paper on the back and the front and, it'll, and there's foam in between, sandwich in between, and sometimes it'll be kind of messy. But you can clean your edges up also. I'm going to use my little glue stick here. And it's back to school time, so you can get a lot of good buys. Right now, Dollar Tree has the Jot. I think it's eight sticks in a pack, so that's a really good deal for your all of your crafting needs. And now I'm going to put down my flag right on top of that. And press it down with my hands to get any wrinkles out. And then I'm going to use my wallpaper smoother. And just smooth that right out. All the way to the edges, because we don't want anything to peel off. And you can go around the edges and reinforce that with some hot glue or any type of glue you have. Now you can see that there's a space that is still bare on the top and the bottom. And that's because I'm going to use something to trim this out. I'm just using regular strength hot glue here. This is going to be in the house. If you're going to put anything like this outside, which I really wouldn't recommend for this type of a project. But if you're going to put it outside maybe on a covered porch, you're probably going to want to use something like uh, Gorilla Glue, something that's stronger and it can deal with um, weather changes without falling apart. Okay, so now I'm just going to add this top and bottom. And really all you need to do, you can use paint sticks, you can use any type of scraps that you have. Just make sure that, you know, for this particular look that it's a longer on the sides than it is um, than the picture is and I'm just going to use my clamps and clamp this down because sometimes the foam boards will bow a little bit and I want to be sure that the glue is sticking down to my trim pieces same thing here and leaving that little space on the back ensures that we have plenty of that picture showing from the flag I don't want to cover up anything that I don't have to Very easy to go back and just fix any little areas that need a little extra love. And now we're going to start on embellishing this. And these pieces of ribbon are about 10 inches long. And all I'm doing is folding them over. So I'm making a loop on the top and squeezing those and holding those in the middle. I'm going to do that with lots of my ribbon. I've just kind of picked through and decided, you know, which ones look like they coordinate nicely and which ones are going to give me that rustic look that I enjoy in my house. And as you know, I have been adding more cottage type feel in my house, so I'm going to try to do that at Christmas time also. So be sure that you subscribe so when we do have Christmas content coming out, you won't miss anything. Now if you don't feel comfortable holding this in your hand, use a clamp and put it together. And you see there's really no pattern um, for this. 
I'm going to take a zip tie. You can use a zip tie, floor wire, a pipe cleaner, a, a twist tie from a bread bag if that's all you have. And just tighten this up really tightly in the middle. And then I'm going to cut off any excess. and fluff out the bow. If you are going to go and buy some zip ties to use in crafting, it's you really might consider getting ones that, the smallest one that you could possibly use to keep your project secure because right there where you see that little white square, that's gonna cause some bulk and it is really difficult because you can't trim it down. It's really difficult to work around that. You have to glue it and then you're gonna have like a little almost like a little gap. It's not a big deal for everything, but if that kind of stuff bothers you, then you might consider getting smaller zip ties, and you can get a variety of zip ties at the Dollar Tree. Very affordable, and lots and lots and lots of them. I think the smallest ones I've seen are the black ones, but um, correct me if I'm wrong if there's something else that you've seen. Okay, this type of bow is what Ramon at Home refers to as a funky bow. And you pretty much are going to have all your tails poking out in every which way. And you're going to have all of your little loops poking out in every which way. And makes a cute bow. And these are really pretty too if you use them on a larger scale on bigger projects. So we're just going to take that and decide where we want it to be. And then hot glue it in place. When I'm doing my crafting, I generally prefer when I'm adding bows to do it in the left corner. I don't know why, it just always feels right to me to put it over there. And I kind of go by how I feel about a project, you know, what feels right to me. So I do recommend that you do the same. Now I'm just gonna take another piece of that. I'm gonna make a really simple little bow, just making a little loop, squishing it down in the middle and then tying it off. Very, very simple. I'm doing a lot more of these little simple bows lately because I feel like they look better with um, the type of decor that's in my home. You do what, what you like. And I'm just gonna add that little kitty right in the middle of that funky bow for a little extra interest. Now we're gonna take some of this Pitberry Vine. I'll get it out in a minute. And you've seen me do this before in projects. We're just going to clip it off at whatever length that you like. Just be sure that you get, you know, several of those berries on the vine. And if you want to make a little twist out of this, a little spiral, you just wrap it around a pencil or whatever you have. And just slide it off the end and there you go. And then you can just add a little hot glue. And put those little pieces wherever you like. I feel like this was appropriate for this picture because of the branches in the background and because it's very snowy so it looked like little snow covered branches to me what do you think I think that really made a difference up there so now I'm just going to take some jute that I have and since conveniently enough there are little hangers on this I'm just gonna tie it off and get it to the length that I want it so simple. If you do not have hangers on your little scraps, all you have to do is hot glue it to the back or tie it on whichever way that you like to do it. You could use a staple gun if you've got a good quality thick piece of material. There you have it. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, project number two is a wood block sign. Simple, simple. You can see the supplies that I'm going to start with. You know, I always end up going off, off plan here. So here's the card that I'm using. And this is just a card that I got from Goodwill. This is just a block that I got from, I think this came from Dirt Cheap. I've used, I bought several of these when I got them for like 10 cents a piece. So I am going to be using this one. I also use that sign in a... A apple project that I did recently turned out really cute. So now I'm going to trim down my card. I've already cut it in half as you saw. 
and I'm going to trim it down to the size that I like it. And pretty much it's going to be almost like an insert into the, um, the wood block that we're using. I want the size of this to be smaller so it almost looks like a frame around it. There you go. And I sanded it down so it would look a little more rustic. I'm going to just take this glue stick and put it all over here. You can use Mod Podge for this if you like. But because I'm doing these videos and I want to get this material out for you quickly, it's generally easier because it dries faster just to use the glue stick. But the Mod Podge will probably last you longer. So I'm just smoothing this out. I love the cardinals and the little birds, and I think this looks really nice with the previous project that we did. And look at that candy cane, Jay. That's really cute. Joy is one of my favorite words. Definitely an encouraging word and something to live by. Now we're going to add a little extra something to this block. You can use ribbon that is a little smaller or the same size as the width of your block. And you can just trim it out. I did get this, this ribbon on clearance at Walmart. I got it around the 4th of July. I also got some navy blue and white, which I hope to be using in some projects soon too. And I'm just going to zigzag it a little so I don't have a big bulky glue line right in the middle. And smooth it out. I want this to look high end, so I'm just kind of zigzagging my line. I do this in a lot of projects where I use ribbon so that you don't see that line through the ribbon. And this seems to work for me. If you do see a little darkness under there, even though you've done a zigzag, when it dries, in my experience, that goes away and you don't see it at all. So we're just going to continue going around here. So have y'all been watching a lot of Christmas in July videos? Is that something that interests you? I know a lot of people are like, no, not Christmas. We haven't even had fall. But it's important for crafters who, who sell their items to be able to get some inspiration before Christmas time so they can start working on their items. They usually do several of one project, so they got to get, they got to get a, ahead of the game a little bit. So I hope that my videos the two videos that I've done for Christmas in July can be some inspiration for, for someone. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next part of this project. We're going to do a bow cut in the same length. I got about 12 inches of ribbon here. I'm going to just stack them on top of each other, double them up, Again, that same little simple bow that I hope you guys are using. Has, has anybody used this bow in your projects? It's so simple, but still pretty. Tied in the middle. I'm just using a little of that cotton twine that comes from Dollar Tree on the big spool. That's what I'm using. I'm going to tie it up really tight. Got to make sure that that bottom loop doesn't come loose to get slack in it you can't the knot won't set up right and when you start pulling on your bow it'll come apart so just be sure that 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 you make that very tight and just slip that knot around to the back and there you go you can trim it up some more if you need to and you can pull the layers of your bow apart I wanted to add a little greenery to this, so I'm going to add a couple of pieces of this pick that I thrifted. And this is like some type of evergreen. Maybe pine, it looks a little bit like something like that. I'm just going to use some jute and tie that up in the middle because they're going to make like a tiny little swag to go on here. Nothing real fancy, anybody can do this. Just put your picks opposite of one another and then tie them in the middle. I don't want anything too heavy on here because I don't want my sign to fall over. This is something that should be able to stand on its own. You can tack down any of the pieces that you need to of your little branches there. Just be sure you protect your fingers when you do it. And rather than dovetailing, since this is a thin ribbon, I'm just going to cut it at a slant. Trim it 
trim up that knot and I'm gonna add it with some glue I love these laundry clamps from Dollar Tree they will hold stuff in place for you until it is set up and there mine is all set up fluff the bow a little bit more and I'm just gonna add a red bead to it there's red berries on this card so I thought this would be really cute right in the middle do you like to add those extra things to your bow or do you like the bow to just stand alone on its own sometimes I leave the bow alone and sometimes I add to it most of the times I think I add to it and there you go and here it is on a tiered tray and here I am showing you how they look together What do you think about these? Will you be using any cardinals in your Christmas decor this year? I'm gonna start off with this one set of flower that I got thrifting. This little cardinal came from Dollar General. These are thrifted. I don't know if that's a pomegranate or what that is, as well as the berries and the little pine picks. These little Curly vines came from a larger vine in my yard. Just clipped those off when they were dried. And this box is a stacking Christmas box from Dollar General. So if you want to, you can take your lid and put it on the side, or you can put it underneath your arrangement just so that you can utilize it. I'm gonna take this foam bo block, which came from the thrift store. And I'm just going to leave it inside of the plastic so it won't make a big mess. And this way I can use it again and again. And I'm going to glue it down. The stem is too long for this short arrangement that I want to make. So I'm just going to take my pliers and cut them down. I'm going to put it in the middle and tilt it slightly to the slot. The to the side because I'm going to be doing something special underneath that flower in a little while. With the three of these pine picks, I am just going to put them around spaced fairly evenly around the box. To make a triangle shape. These stems on these berries had seen better days, so I'm just gonna go around them with a green floral tape. It's a waxed tape. It's not very sticky if you feel it. Uh, if you put a little tension on it, then it becomes adhesive and will stick to itself. Be sure when you get berries and florals from the thrift store that you give them a little a dusting, a wash up, whatever they might require, just to get them cleaned up get the dust off, give them a little bit of their life back. And with these particular berries, they're wired so you can spread them apart and, you know, just make them look a little bit more lively. I'm trying to keep all of my greenery low and tight because I want this to be a short arrangement. I want it to be a small arrangement. I'm going to trim that one down as well, curve it outward, and then place it across the arrangement from the other one. Don't worry about the foam showing because that's going to be covered in a moment. Now these I don't know if they're if it's called gilded or what but it's got like a gold powdery substance on it and it was coming off all over my hands you'll see in a moment look at my fingers Ew. <laughs> thankfully it washes off pretty easily but you never know when you're thrifting what you're gonna come across and how old it is there's no telling how old these picks were some of the little wires were kind of rusty looking so there's just no telling. But for a traditional piece, I think that 
the gold just really, really looks good. So I'm filling out down and around the edges. Now I'm just going through these pieces of vine that I have to see which ones I want to use. We need a little, a little flyaway or height in this, and I think that these would look really good. You can spray paint them if you want to, but and it might might have been a good idea to maybe spray paint these gold since this is traditional, but I think this this is going to look good. I myself enjoy a rustic decor, so you know I like those wood elements anyway. You see, they just give it a little extra something there. Now I'm just taking a pick here to make this have something to stand on, something that we can poke down in there. Because if I was to try to stick the vine down in there itself, for one thing, it would be too short. Secondly, the vine itself is not going to puncture through that plastic and into that foil foam. And I'm going to take some Spanish moss that is from my yard, let it dry out in the sun, and then you can use it in your arrangements. And I'm going to tuck that between the box edge and the foam. You can extend some of that Spanish moss up and onto the foam if you'd like. I wanted to add a little more greenery here, so I'm just taking some of those picks that I had laying there and placing them around in the open spots. Keeping in mind that to the high side of that flower in the back, I'm going to be needing some space to put my little cardinal friend. So I want to leave uh, some space on that side. This one for an example. I'm going to cut that down and add it back in. I'm going to add one more kind of greenery in here just because I can't, I can't stand not to. I just want to fill it up with all the green goodness. I'm going to add bunches of Woodland Wonder. You just use whatever you have. You make sure that the flower is looking good. Pull all the petals out around the, the greenery. So this is a hole that I left intentionally because this is going to be where we put our little bird's nest so our cardinal will have a place to live. I got that cardinal on a clearance sale at Dollar General two years ago when I got the boxes and it was 90% off. So I think it was only a dollar to begin with. So yeah, I got three of those. Now I'm just going to fill it out on the inside. I'm gonna see how my bird, my bird is going to sit in there. Then I'm gonna take some of that Spanish moss, wrap it around my hand a few times into a circle and then there we have our little nest and our cardinal goes right back on the inside how cute is that so this is a traditional arrangement for those of you who aren't particularly into the rustic or the farmhouse style if you're not into neutral theme this is the perfect one for you and i love that it has a little peekaboo surprise on the side i think that anyone would enjoy having this if it's something that you wanted to make for your, your grandmother, your mother, a sister. I think anyone would like having this in their home for Christmas. Ladder. I have some of these snowy willow picks from Dollar Tree. Some snowy picks that I don't know where I got them from. And these two little cardinals, they have a little bit of a different position and they came from Dollar General some zip ties and a wooden ladder that I thrifted. That wooden ladder is about 30 inches long. I'll start this very easy project by putting down one willow pick. I'm leaving the entire thing together, not cutting it apart. Surprise, surprise, same here, whole pick. This is such an easy project if you've got a ladder, so easy. Gonna use a zip tie, go around the back, Pull it through till it's tight and it's sitting right on the front facing of the ladder. You can cut off that extra 
and then we're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction, almost like making a swag. So I'm just going to kind of feed this up through here, and then we'll add the next snowy pine pick right on top with another zip tie. You can get zip ties from Dollar Tree, and you can get them from lots of different stores. I'm going to fluff out these willow branches under here just a little bit, just to kind of splay them out, give it a little more dimension, because we love dimension, don't we? We don't want anything flat. We want something to be interesting to the eye. I'm going to do the same thing up top, just going to kind of move it around a little. Then I'm going to place my birds on the ladder. They're taking a little shelter on the ladder. So I think I want this one in the center piece. Or the, well, it's not the center wrong, but I'm going to put it in the center of this step on the ladder. Hold it there for a minute until it is firmly attached. Now I'm using Gorilla Glue here, so you want to use something that's got some strong bonding so it doesn't come off. Ideally, I would like to be able to put this on my porch or hang it on my porch, so I want something that's not going to come apart in the elements. I'm going to put this one right here and turn him just a little bit. So the opening there, I left open in case I wanted to do something different, but I decided another pick here would be the perfect thing. So I just cut the end off, laid it kind of sideways, and I'm just going to zip tie that down right in the middle. Now, of course, if you want to put some snow on the steps, you can certainly put some snow on each of the little steps of the ladder. My husband suggested that after the fact, and yes, that would be the perfect thing to do, um, is to add some snow to those steps. But whatever you want to do, you can make it easy. I think this looks totally fine as it is, but that's up to you to make it your own. Whatever you like, go ahead and do it. You can add some berries in here. You can use a little hot glue if things are getting out of control. You could put a nest in there. However you like it, it's going to be the perfect way to bring you some joy. The next project is going to be Frosty's Hat. I thrifted this little basket hat, basket weave hat, I don't know. It's like a bluish black color and um, we're going to just deconstruct it because I like the bones of it, but we're going to change it a bit. So just remember what it looks like now. I'm going to cut the hat band off and when I pull the glue it does leave a little spot there, but that doesn't matter. It has quite a bit of dust on it, um, so when I do baskets and wreaths that are dusty, I just take a big brush and just brush at it, and it gets the dust off of it, and you wouldn't believe the dust that falls off. Look at this table. Look at all that. That came out of that hat, and of course, the one little strand of paintbrush. Okay, so I saved styrofoam. This came in a, um, a table box. I'm going to use my little knife from Dollar Tree, my styrofoam pool noodle cutter. It works really good. I thought at first, you know, that is so gimmicky, but it really does work nicely. I'm going to cut enough foam to put in the bottom. It's not quite tall enough, but I got it the width that I want it, but it needs to be taller so that it sits right at the top. And I was making sure also that you can't see that foam through the, the weave. So I'm just going to keep kind of chopping away until I get the right I guess thickness to go on top of that and then I'll fill in on the sides with a little bit of foam. You don't have to do this neatly, it's not important because this is going to be covered up with um, something else, so it's totally fine. A little hot glue, you can put that together and then shove some pieces inside, it's nice and tight. Didn't even have to glue it. So I'm going to take a piece of this, um, I think it's like a snow sheet, you know, you use it for decorations. I'm going to cut a circle out of it that will fit the size of the top of the hat. You can flip your hat upside down if you find something like it and uh, trace on it and then tri you know trim it out that way if you would like. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue right on the edge here to put that snow down because this top of the hat is going to have like a snowy appearance. And you could use a white uh, piece of felt maybe for this. The thing that you would need to make sure of is that the weave is not too thick that you can't puncture a hole because we're going to be placing florals in here and you want to make sure that you can actually get the wires from your floral down in here. If you can't though you can always get like a, a metal skewer or something and poke the hole in it and then put your greetery in it with a little hot glue. 
So there's some options for you. So I have this piece of thrifted garland. It's got like a silvery, um, glistening kind of look. It's, it's very mellow though, not really loud. I'm going to pull those pieces off of the garland and then I'm going to cut down a piece of ribbon because I want to give him his hat band back, but I don't want it to be that traditional plaid. So I'm going to use some of my wax here, antiquing wax, and then brush it onto this black. When you add this brown on top of this black, it gives it a warmer toned black. And for my decor, it just gives it a better look. This is not necessarily to age it, to make it look aged. It's just to give it more of a rustic look, more of a brown toned black or a warm toned black. You see, it does make a difference. I don't have to do the bottom. No one's going to see it. And you're just going to continue all the way around with this until you get all of your color covered up. You can get little um, snowman hats lots of different places and you could certainly feel free to use something that came from St. Patrick's Day maybe or you know a different holiday a New Year's you can get hats or whatever you could use something like that if you wanted to so just because you don't have the exact same thing is what I'm saying you can kind of apply it to to what you're seeing here on a different scale so I'm gonna wrap this hat band around. I want that threaded side up and the rough side down so that you won't see it. All we'll see is the finished product, which will be the nice, neat trim on the top. And so now he has his hat band back. And I'm gonna start adding down this greenery. I'm just gonna use some hot glue. You can see in here, I don't know if it's because it's garland that it, like one side of the greenery actually is sort of flat and the other side is um, more elevated so I'm going to flip it so that the flat side goes down against the brim of the hat because that's where we're gluing it to the brim of the hat not to the the tall part of the hat Lord anatomy of a hat I have no idea what the pieces are okay so what I'm doing is adding like two and then one then two and then one and I'm going back and forth it gives it a little bit of a variety and it doesn't make everything look so matchy matchy it's rustic you know it's rustic it's woodland it's winter wonderland we want to give it that movement and that feel of being kind of wild and out in nature and so we're almost done with this and i encourage you to use some leftover picks for this you don't have to use all the same thing use whatever leftovers you have from christmas and tuck those in there can you imagine some of that fern in there that would be really pretty too but i'm using what i have like I said, to make these winter wonderland pieces. And these are some of the pine cones that came in there. They also have a little silver on them. If you get these pine cones on projects and you want to take them off and reuse them, it's just a piece of wire wrapped on the inside. You just cut it and then untwist it. Very easy. It's just looped around it one time and then twisted. And then that's how it's put on the decorations that, you know, you might thrift. So I'm going to use hot glue. I don't want those wires scratching up my table. I'm going to use the biggest of three, put it down first, then I'm going to take the medium size one and put it down next, kind of right beside it. And you know, I pick these up and look at it before I actually glue it. So I know how in mind how I want it to be. It's a lot easier that way than having to go back and fix it. So since I've run out of brim over here, I just put the glue in the little, um, the sides of the pine cone and then stuck it into the sides of the other one. It fits like a puzzle. It's perfect. Okay, so now we're going to start with the top part of it and then I'll go kind of back and forth on the top on the sides. You'll see how that's going to work. These little pigs look like little greenery trees to me. So I'm just using them as trees. I'm just picking some pretty ones that have a good shape that have that kind of a teardrop shape to put there. I'm going to use a little bit of that willow over there near the pine cones. That's gonna be almost like the feather in the hat. Then I'm going to make a bird nest. So I'm gonna take some of this berry garland, I guess is what it's called from Dollar Tree. You can get this all the time and in a bunch of different colors. Usually uh, the colors go by season. So you'll get more orange, like in the fall, and then the reds and silver and stuff like that you'll get 
closer to winter time or Christmas time. So all I'm doing is a start off in the middle with just two loops and then I'm going to expand the loop outward like a swirl. So the diameter is going to get larger and larger as I go. Round and around and I know this looks boring but there's method to the madness. See I want this to be, I'm pushing upward and I want it to be in that shape of a nest. Around and around and then you can just twist the tail around and then manipulate the little strands so that you get it into the right shape that you like. And I'll put it right there. It's a good place for it. I'm going to use some of these floral pins and just push these down into the snow and the foam and it goes in there perfectly. And you can get those little floral pins any place I think that you can find crafting supplies. I did not get mine from Dollar Tree. Mine were thrifted, but I know you can get them pretty much anywhere, and I can't imagine they would cost that much money. But they are very handy to have for some projects. So now the bird, it's actually a bell, but his bell is broken. He is glued down. We got a little cardinal right there in his nest, or her nest, whichever one. Then you can begin to cut your picks apart. You don't have to leave your picks in, in one piece. Cut them into pieces to suit what it is you need. So now these look like little trees. All the leaves are gone for the winter time and they're just branches sticking up there with a little bit of snow on them. And I think that texturally it really does something to the piece because it's more of a woody look and then you've got the little trees beside it and they're so full and green and lush. And it just reminds me of winter time. So in these little bags of assorted scatter you can get from Dollar Tree, there are a couple of different types of things you can use. So I was just kind of digging through there to see what my options were. And I found a little strand of this white pit berry. So I decided to use it almost like a little bud branch too. And then stick it with the trees. And then another piece I put with the pine cones and our little willow feather. And then there was a little piece of pine in there put that in for a little bit of a different look. You know, we're in the woods, you don't just have two types of trees. There's all kinds of stuff out there. So these little, what are these? I don't know, but they look like little flowers to me and I really like them. I think they're pretty. I'm gonna add those here and there around the pine cones on the brim and I'm also gonna put them around the bird and on the platform, you know, just wherever it looks cute, wherever I feel like I need a little extra something. There's also little pine cones in there, so I'll add some of those little snowy pine cones here and there. I know, y'all, some people say I just do too much. I just kill it. I should have stopped four or five steps ago, but that is just not my nature. It isn't my nature. But I do highly recommend you do what is best for you. You can't tell people that they're doing something wrong just because that's not the way you would do it, you know? We've got to be kind not critical, let's be kind and supportive of everybody's crafting. Just like when you ladies send me, and gents too, if a, if a gent's gonna show me a picture of his crafts, but um, you ladies like to share your crafts with me and you email them to me and I love it and I love looking at them and they're all beautiful in their own way and they're so unique because everybody does it differently. That doesn't mean they're wrong, right? It just means they're different. Different's good in my opinion. So I'm just tearing some more pieces off here and just placing them around in the greenery. Ugh, I love this piece. I love this piece, y'all. I, really I went ahead do. and added a little light back there in that barn so you could see it. I think this is my favorite of the three. Frosty's hat. Very full and lush and winter wonderland looking. And then the ladder also, and we got the cardinals, which are near and dear to my heart. I want you to get creative. It's winter time, and I want to let y'all know that if rustic, woodland, uh, winter wonderland is your thing in the winter time, then you are in the right place. Because I'm going to show you how to do it on a budget, and I'm going to show you how to do it uniquely, so that it's something that you love. I want to inspire you. I'm not telling you to do things any particular way. When you subscribe to this channel, I do my best to help you out 
If you have questions in the comment section, you can email me. All that information is in the description box below. I really do hope that you can go out and find some joy in your day. Tell somebody you love them. Tell somebody that you're grateful to have them in your life. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.